In my playlist introduction, I gave a little background to Roy Orbison, the man and musician. Here's more about his personal life and legacy. Roy was married three times to two different women, twice to his first wife, Claudette, from 1957 to 64, and again in 1965. Their second marriage ended the following year when Claudette died in a collision with a pickup truck on a motorbike ride home with Roy. He suffered another personal tragedy in 1968 when his two eldest sons tragically died in a house fire at the family home in Tennessee whilst Roy was away touring in the UK. In a touching tribute, the fire-damaged property was later bought by Johnny Cash, who demolished the house and planted an orchard in its place. Roy went on to have three more sons from later marriages. In 1969, Roy found happiness with his third wife, Barbara. Their marriage lasted until his death in 1988. Whether connected or not to the traumas in his personal life, Roy's career had faltered by the late 1960s. As a change of direction, he had signed a five-film contract with MGM in 1965, but the initial comedy was poorly received and a box office flop. MGM never took up the option on other planned productions. Roy also recorded an album of Don Williams songs and another of Hank Williams covers, but neither sold well. Undaunted, he continued recording albums in the 1970s, but sales were still slow. In reality, the musical context had changed substantially and the charts were now dominated by legends like Jimi Hendrix, Jefferson Airplane, The Doors and Rolling Stones. Despite apparently sinking fortunes and doubts about his own talent, the Orbison influence on other musicians remained strong. Popular covers of his songs were released by high-profile artists like Linda Ronstadt, Emmy Lou Harris and K.D. Lang. Further hope came in 1976 when a compilation of his greatest hits reached the UK number one. Unbelievably, misfortune struck again when he underwent triple coronary bypass surgery and suffered from duodenal ulcers in 1978. Happily, by 1980 he was back in popular demand, especially in Europe, following further high-profile covers of his songs. In 1987, he was publicly twice honoured with induction to the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame and being welcomed into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame by avid fan Bruce Springsteen. Roy was not particularly given to collaborating for musical performances in his lifetime, although he had duetted with selected other stars, including Johnny Cash and the Everly Brothers, on TV shows in the 1960s. For this reason, he might have been shocked to see his on-stage performances with other artists after his death. What? I hear you exclaim. Well, it became something of a vogue to duet on stage at live performances with a hologram of Roy singing. His first such outing was the In Dreams tour, featuring the great Roy Orbison in hologram with a full real-life orchestra and backing singers. If you're not much bothered by technology, a hologram is a laser-assisted 3D photograph. And when I say photograph, hologram images can be pretty big. Other late artists who also performed in this way include Frank Zappa and Karen Carpenter. Apparently audiences for the high-tech gigs have been none too shabby. I've included two of Roy's hologram songs in the playlist, track 14, You Got It, and track 15, It's Over. The Raoul Marlowe Roy Orbison duet of Bridge Over Troubled Water is another technically enabled performance. The two voices blend effortlessly, although separated in time by 30 years. Roy's 2018 In Dreams tour regularly sold some 1,800 seats for each show. He toured virtually with Buddy Holly the following year, and more hologram tours are planned to include Whitney Houston and Amy Winehouse. It seems then that our favourite stars will live on after death to entertain us in live venues through the miracle of 3D laser technology. For me, if the atmosphere and sound are right, then I'm up for the musical experience. Perhaps if we don't fancy travelling, we can email a 3D pic of ourselves in full concert regalia to appear on the front row going ballistic in appreciation. Thank you for listening. I've been Maxi Moyer. I'll talk to you again next week. Goodbye.